Hello guys, this is Celso. In this tutorial video, we are going to see how OpenDSS builds the Y matrix of a generic system. In my opinion, this is one of the most important videos of this tutorial, since the method described here contains one of the core features of OpenDSS modeling technique. First, let's define the Y primitive for a single element. An element has terminals. When you create an element in OpenDSS, you must define the name of the buses which each terminal is connected to. A terminal has conductors, and the point of connection between each conductor and a bus is called a node. Let's label the nodal voltages as V1 to Vn at the first terminal, and Vn plus 1 to Vn plus M at the second terminal. The injected current follows the same pattern. They are related to the nodal voltages through the Y primitive. Then, the Y primitive dimension is the number of nodes by the number of nodes. One important feature of the Y primitive is that it's always a symmetrical matrix. In other words, the element Yij is equal to the element Yji. As you can notice, the Y primitive can be split in four submatrices. The first submatrix, Y bus 1 bus 1, is constituted by the self and the transference admittances of the bus 1 nodes in our case, nodes 1 to n. The submatrices y bus 1, bus 2, and y bus 2, bus 1 are constituted by the transference admittances between nodes of bus 1 and 2. In other words, the indexes of each node admittance in these two submatrices contain a node from bus 1 and a node from bus 2. For example, y n plus m 1 in y bus 2, bus 1 and y1 n plus m in y bus 1 bus 2. Finally, the submatrix y bus 2 bus 2 is constituted by the self and the transference admittances of the bus 2 nodes, node n plus 1 to node n plus m. Now, let's imagine that our element is connected to a single bus. For example, it could represent a load. In this case, as there is only one bus, the Y primitive matrix's dimension is n by n, which, keeping the same naming pattern, could be called as Y bus 1 bus 1. The same principle applies for any element. If you consider a generic element with k terminals, with an arbitrary number of conductors each, and by consequence k buses, we can say that Y primitive is a k by k matrix and it has k times k submatrices, where y11 is a c1 by c1 matrix, y12 is a c1 by c2 matrix, y21 is a c2 by c1 matrix, and so on. Now, the following question arises. If we have a system with a great amount of elements, how can we use each element's y primitive to build a y system matrix that represents the entire system. In order to answer this question, let's consider the following system. It has four buses, named as 100, 200, 300, and 400. The circuit element is connected to bus 100. Between buses 100 and 200, there is a delta Y three-phase transformer called transformer 1 and there is a three-phase load called load 1 connected to bus 200. Note that both the second terminal of the transformer and the three-phase load are grounded through node 0 of bus 200. There is a two-phase line connected between buses 200 and 300, a center tap the transformer called transformer 2 between buses 300 and 400, and finally two loads connected to bus 400. Load 3, that is a single phase load, and load 2, that is a two phase load. First, we need to understand how OpenDSS interprets the system. It basically converts all the power conversion elements models to a different model. For example, the circuit element is represented with its Norton equivalent model, and the loads are broken into two different parts. One stands for its linear behavior, which is represented as a fixed or constant impedance, and the second one is a current source, which represents the load's non-linear behavior. This current is known as compensation current. 
and its calculation depends on the loads model chosen by the user. For example, constant power, constant current, and constant impedance. Finally, the system contains all the elements within the light blue boundary. So, let's take the current sources out of our drawing and redraw the system in order to make it smaller. We have basically the parallel impedances of the Norton equivalent connected to bus 100, the transformer T1, the three-phase load, the two-phase line, the transformer T2 between buses 300 and 400, and the loads L2 and L3 connected to bus 400. The first step executed by OpenDSS is to build the Y primitive matrix of each element separately. Looking to the circuit element, we can verify that it has two terminals with three nodes each. Then, its Y primitive matrix is a 6 by 6 matrix that can be written in the following format with four 3 by 3 submatrices. Note that the node 0 is the system's reference. This fact will be explored later on this tutorial. Now, Let's go to OpenDSS and create a circuit element to verify what I've just said. I will name this element as Thevenin equivalent and set the base KV to 115 and its first terminal is connected to the bus 100. As I haven't specified the second terminal, by default it will be connected to ground as we want. OpenDSS builds the system's matrices after a solve command. Then let's solve it and export the y primes matrices. As you can see, so far there is only one element in our circuit, which is the circuit element. It is classified as a vSource and by default it's named as source. Note that the admittances are broken into real and imaginary parts. That's why we are seeing 12 columns. Then its matrix is 6 by 6 and symmetrical, as expected. We can also easily identify each one of its four submatrices. Now, let's come back to our system's draw and take a look at the transformer T1. It has two terminals with a total of seven nodes. Then, its Y primitive matrix should be a 7 by 7 matrix. It's connected to nodes 1, 2, and 3 at bus 100 and to nodes 1, 2, 3 and the reference at the bus 200. We want to keep the admittances connected to the reference in a separate submatrix for reasons that will be explained later. Then we can find 9 submatrices in Y prime T1. Back to OpenDSS, let's define this transformer. Its name is T1. It is a three phase transformer with two windings. Let's use a reactance of 5% PU. Its first winding is connected to bus 100 and it's connected in delta and its second winding is connected to bus 200 in a Y connection with the neutral solidly grounded. Let's solve and export the Y primitives again. As you can notice, this Y primitive matrix has 8 nodes, although we were expecting 7 nodes. The reason for that is that in its internal algorithm, OpenDSS forces the number of nodes of each terminal to be equal to the number of nodes of the terminal with the higher amount of nodes. It's like if there is a node number 4 in the first terminal completely isolated, because the admittance between this node and the rest of the nodes of the element and also the ground is zero, which means an infinite impedance. The next element to be analyzed will be the two-phase line, LN, in pink. It's connected to four nodes. Then we expect its Y primitive matrix to be a 4x4 four four matrix, in which we will define four submatrices. The line's name is LN. It has two phases, and its first terminal is connected to bus 200, to nodes 1 and 2, and its second terminal is connected to the same nodes but to bus 300. Let's set a length of 0.3 km and use some predefined matrices, R matrix, X matrix, and C matrix. Solving the circuit and exporting the Y primitive, we can see that it is a 4x4 four four symmetrical matrix, as expected. 
Now let's take a look to transform a T2. It has two terminals and it's connected to five nodes, which are nodes 1 and 2 of bus 300 and nodes 1, 2 and the reference of bus 400. Then we expect its Y primitive matrix to be a 5 by 5 matrix. Back to OpenSCS, it is named as T2 and it is a single phase transformer. This center tap transformer can be modeled as a three winding transformer, where its first winding is connected to nodes 1 and 2 of bus 300, its second winding is connected to nodes 1 and the reference, and its third winding is connected between the reference and the node 2. Pay attention to this bus's definition in order to satisfy the polarity of the second terminal's windings. I'm going to solve the system again and check the Y primitive matrix for this element. As you can see, the Y primitive matrix has six nodes, not five as we were expecting. Why is that? It is because this transformer has three terminals and each node of each terminal is taken into account. In other words, the first terminal has two nodes, nodes 1 and 2 of bus 300. The second terminal has two nodes, nodes 1 and 0 of bus 400. And the third terminal has two nodes, nodes 0 and 2 of bus 400. The fact that the second winding and the third winding share a node, node 0, is considered only when the system's Y matrix is built. Now, let's analyze the loads, starting with L1. L1 is a three-phase load and it's connected to bus 200 only. As it is grounded, it is connected to four different nodes. Then, its Y primitive matrix should be a 4x4 four four matrix. In OpenDSS, by defining this load and solving the circuit, we can verify its Y primitive matrix. As you can see, it is a symmetrical 4x4 four four matrix as expected. Finally, the loads L2 and L3 are both connected to bus 400, with L2 being connected to nodes 1 and 2, and L3 connected to nodes 1 and the reference. Keeping the same notation we have been adopting, Y primitive L2 will be named as Y L2 400 backslash 400, and Y prim L3 will be broken into four submatrices, because as you should already have noticed, we are trying to keep the admittances related to the reference in separated submatrices. Let's define these loads in OpenSCS. As you can see, the Y primitive matrix of the two loads are 2 by 2, as expected. Now that we have defined all the elements, let's open the Y matrix of the system. In order to do that, we can use the export menu Y and Y matrix. As you can see, it has 10 nodes. Why is that? How was it defined? According to the Y primitive matrix's format that we have derived for each element, we could expect a Y matrix with the following format. That includes all the nodes of the Y primitive matrix of the element circuit, the transformer T1, the line LN, the transformer T2, the load L1, the load L2 and the load L3. However, an Y matrix with this format would be a 15 by 15 matrix, not a 10 by 10 matrix, as we've just seen. The reason being is, is because in a Y matrix, we do not consider the reference node. In fact, all of those nodes are actually the same and they are just not included in the Y matrix. That's why we kept the elements connected to node 0 of each bus in a separate submatrix of each Y primitive matrix. Then, neglecting the reference node, we end up with a 10 by 10 matrix. Now, the rule is pretty simple. Each submatrix of each Y primitive matrix is added to the Y matrix in the corresponding area. For example, for the element circuit, the first submatrix related to bus 100 nodes 1, 2, and 3 is added to the same place where the same node's reference is located. The same applies for all the other elements. The transformer T1, the line LN,
the transformer T2. The load L1. The load L2. And finally, the load L3. Then, the final Y matrix has the following format. And its values, taken from open the SCS Y matrix report, is shown below. Just as a verification, let's calculate one specific element of the Y matrix. I will take a random element here. For example, the element connected to nodes 300.1 and 300.2. As you can see from the system's drawing, there are only two elements connected to bus 300, which are the line LN and the transformer T2. Then, we can take the contribution of each of these elements to Y matrix from their Y primitive matrix. In the Y primitive matrix of the line LN, we are looking for the element connected between nodes 300.1 and 300.2. This admittance is minus 0.734 plus J 0.304583. We are also looking for the same admittance in the transformer T2 Y primitive matrix. That is minus 0.08795 plus J 0.916. 1, 1, 3. Finally, by adding these two elements, we get minus 0.82195 plus J 1.22069. That is exactly the same value found in row 300.1 and column 300.2 spot in the system's Y matrix.